this seemed to be able to, this was a, an, a door opening. Mm -hmm. You know, they all said, I think they were waiting for me when I came in. <laughs> you know, they, yeah. I was here, you know, I was a, you know, and this wasn't a place where I was the only black guy, which, you know, in many cases I have been, but in this case, a lot of black people working at, at the station, and but that this was truly the first time I'd ever heard of water cooler conversation, and people were just talking, they fell in love with all of you, and they would say to me, how do you feel yeah. mm -hmm. about it? And I would turn it back around and say, well, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. Because clearly there was some guilt going on there at times, and they were just trying to figure this all about. But the fact that it opened up these great conversations that I don't know if it happens today, because it is a difficult subject to talk about. There's a lot of true, true bonding with some of my friends after roots. Actually, the original bonding, of course, is with, with Stan Bonnie yeah. and his family. But there's friends I grew up with who were friends anyway. But when they saw roots, the bonding have been really strong in their lifetime friends. Um, uh, that's the positive <coughs> part of what just happened. Then there are other things that happen, but the, the, the best is the bonding of, of us as a people with the people uh, that didn't actually realize what sure. we went through. I had a lot of people, yeah. white people that would come up to me apologizing, saying, I'm yeah. so sorry, you didn't know. We never learned this in school. This is it's not, not discussed. And, and my goodness, I realized, well, where you came from. I mean, as far as they were concerned, Africa was that, as Lynn said, you know, jamba, jamba, jamba kind of thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, in, you know, in Tarzan. And so yeah. um, they were constantly saying, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. So I'm yeah, yeah, saying, you know, that's interesting um, because a lot of people will still, you know, go up to and say this thing about, you know, I'm sorry that happened to you or that sort of thing. But you see, this is why Noah praises Alex Haley. Because yes. what he did was bring our Holocaust. Yes. Very clever. Yes. Very clever. This is our Holocaust. Yes. You know, my Jewish brothers and sisters, they went through their Holocaust. And every day, every Sunday at 9 o'clock on Channel 11, I grew up watching the Holocaust. The Holocaust. Finally, through Alex Haley's wisdom, he brought our Holocaust and said, this is the real of the real. Yeah. And now we can see our Holocaust. Because that's just a scratch up on the surface. Now we got to go deeper into a place where I call where we find out where we all from that, that deep root thing called God or yes. Allah or yeah. Buddha or Jesus or Elohim. When are we going to move past now? We've done it. We've done that, done that. But now the work is to be done. This called this Black History Month. Like we're black for a month. But <laughs> this is... A, a call to action is what this is all about. I mean, did you hear uh, uh, Harry, Harry Belafonte? Belafonte? All right. You know, yeah. Harry Belafonte yeah. spoke about the fact that today, what's going on in our communities, it's not just not, it's no longer that, that white, the white man, it's us is doing it to us. It's a reconnection. Yes. It's a, right, exactly. So if, if Roots is to do anything, Roots is about the heritage of a people. But great 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 grandmother and great 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 grandfather went through our story. When I was growing up, I learned history. His story. You know, that there was But I did not learn my story, which is the mystery. And now we're saying, look into the mystery and find the wonders of who you are. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Exactly. Exactly. For all people. For all people. Yeah, no, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, okay, I'm sorry, I'm just going to off there. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll take another bite of that. <laughs> Go ahead, Lou. There was a time when no child, I'm old enough to remember this, and maybe you can identify, when no child could go out the door. Without being dressed properly. Uh oh, uh oh, don't, 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 don't go there. Clean. Don't go there. Uh, we'll have some uh, respect for the elders. Don't go there. Uh, respect for the opposite sex. That's yes. right. Uh, have some kind of spiritual enlightenment. Yes. Yes. Some yes. Knowledge of their roots. Yes. Yes. And some some conflict resolution so that there was nothing in the way between them and school before yes. they put their hand on the doorknob, and that went away. Uh, so I have humbly come up with an, a, a foundation. It's called E Racism. And that is for these children to practice the way we should be in the future by being sensitive and compassionate to one another. Uh, well, the the African-American child has to play catch-up and reestablish that information highway about what, whose shoulders they stand on from back to Africa all the way through so they can talk equally about uh, uh, the Roman Empire and the Greek Empire. But in the long run, we need a, com a mutual compassion 
uh, to, to, to make sure that we respect one another's culture in this country, which is true democracy, so that we do not have to drop a bomb again in the name of democracy. Yes. Our backyard will be clean. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. That's where we're going. And it's probably quite necessary. So if we have to do it with the next generation and teach them how to do that, then that's what we have to do. Well, we better hurry up and run. Yeah. We've got to so run now. Sure. And go out. But we need to tell, tell our them stories, them too. I think yes. that as, as adult parents, you need to tell your story. The one thing that I regret, I had a grandmother who, uh, she was one of ten children, and uh, my great-great-grandmother was uh, a slave, but the master had the ten children by my great-great-grandmother. Mm -hmm. And he built the exact same house that he lived in with his wife for my grandmother mm -hmm. and the ten children right next door. And they were all educated. He built a school and they were all educated and they were, yeah, story. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, uh, doctors and dentists and teachers and, mm -hmm. and those are stories that, that need, to be told. need to be told. We owe it to our children to pass our stories yes. down because if you, you know, don't know where you come from, you, you can't go forward. Yeah, you know, in, 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 in harmony with that, my want for this month, we're we calling it Black History Month. You know, my, my, my Jewish brothers and sisters have a thing they call Seda. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Where uh, they sit around and they eat certain foods that represent their journey out of Egypt. My want is the African American family sits around, and even churches got to get involved in this. Yes. They sit around the table, they have certain foods that we had to endure and read slave letters about where we've come from. Yeah. That's this, this is our Seda. Yeah. Yeah. Our Seda. See, that's, that's the importance. I think that's the importance of roots. We were having this conversation at, at, at lunch today, uh, yeah. Lou and, 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 and Mark, my business partner, and I. Africans, African Americans are the only group of people on the planet who have had a discontinuity with their stories that define their culture. The, the break from the shores of Africa to the shores of, of this country created a discontinuity in terms of our connection to our past and those stories that define us. Storytelling is one of the oldest forms of communication on the planet. Every culture on the planet has a tradition of storytelling. Why? Because it helps inform who we are, what our place in our society is, and, and, and what we're supposed to be about as human beings. So Roots was the first time for black people in this country to get a sense of the power, on a mass scale, the sense of the power of our story. There's a whole generation. I've got an 18-year-old. My children are 32 now and 18. My 18-year-old, every time she, going through school, every time February came around, she would roll her eyes and just, <sighs> because she's as one of the few raisins in the oatmeal, right? Yeah. Everybody, every eye turns to her during the module when we're talking about slavery. And... My, respo and my response to that is, well, isn't that why so many suffered and died? So that this current generation has the right to feel that, you know what, that's in the past? Yes, sir. They do. But the danger is that we are only continuing that discontinuity, right? As Leslie says, we have to tell our stories to our children because... This Christmas, BET aired Roots again, and there were a whole generation mm -hmm. of people who never saw Roots before, who were being introduced to it by aunts, <laughs> uncles, grandmothers, grandfathers, right? And on The View today, we had this conversation during a commercial. It's not okay that Roots is only broadcast by a black network, yeah, you know, during Black History true. Month, because America needs to continue to remind itself about our common story yes, right. so that we don't repeat the past. You see, yes, that's what they yes, call us United States of America. Nobody, in everybody who has come in this country has come through some oppression. Yeah. The, the, the American Indian, first, the first and foremost. So our stories as a nation should be told. We were talking about the fact of how Hollywood today is, you know, really more, it's, it's leaning on the other side again. 
we're, so it's not standing up straight. We're talking about the people of America. We're talking about one second. All victims, people, we are victors. Yeah, there, there's yes. an element somewhere during, uh, I guess it was uh, integration, when we made a decision, we African Americans made a decision to abandon something that was really well worth it in order to accomplish something we thought was success and happiness. Right. But really, back what we abandoned was deeper and stronger than we should have brought with us right. for integration. And we'd be better off now. Did but you tell? Now, we can grab those rules. We can. We can, yeah. and can, and contribute that to the overall American part because it's centuries older than anything there is. Yeah. Back in tribalism, everybody had to contribute to the tribe in order for the exactly. to That's exactly. democracy. That's right. That's democracy. That memories had to come back, and we all add to the. I call it the American soup. Mm -hmm. And that's what democracy is: the success of everybody putting their culture into a common American pie, and all sharing equally in its in its in its. It's, it's results. That's America. That's democracy. And then, by example, we can attract people and not have to drop a bomb again. Yeah. So let's you know, you know, here, the here's, a, here's the thing now. Here's the thing now. You're right. It is a democracy. Correct. And one of the greatest words was, I, I heard a phrase was going, yes, we can. Okay, it was some years ago, and a man was elected named Barack Obama. Yes, we can. We were saying yes, we can because we wanted yes. For America, and as soon as this man, this African American, was in place, it seemed like people went, "Okay, he's there. Let's go." He's in office again, again, but he is just one man. He cannot do it by himself, he people. Needs yeah. he, he needs support. us. Hello, is anybody out there? Everybody voted for him. Everybody vote for him. He needs us to make this work. We're talking, about, we're talking about America here, the cultural melting pot of the world. So let's become that. But let me also say one thing, is that back when Roots and Rich Man Poor Man <coughs> and, and the Thornbirds, the network television spent money. I mean, look how was rich. Was committed to yeah. storytelling. Was yeah. committed to storytelling. Story story yeah. Now we're committed to reality yes. TV. Yes. Oh. Yes. I'm sorry. Not on TV. that this PBS show is showing, that these miniseries, they spent money. They had great writers who were writing great stories, and, and we've lost that. We've lost that. It's an era that it has gone by, and that's why having this on PBS mm -hmm. makes people go, my goodness, why can't thank we God see this PBS. again? Thank God. Let's, but, you know, let's... I do want to thank the producer. You know, Steve is here, but, you know, there are clip shows, and, there are, and there's this. Because, you know, they could have taken this thing on, on, on you know, the miniseries and turned it into just great clips. But I think the fact that when you looked at this, what you saw was really reality. I mean, I think yeah, that, yeah. you know, they showed the warts as much as anything else, which I think is really a credit to the producers. Where are you, Steve, by the way? Hey. 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 Thank you, Steve. Thank you. 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 To our, our great television show. So... It was interesting hearing Lynn Moody talk about the fact that once this was done, the doors were going to open. <laughs> and, and everybody, and there'd be black actors everywhere. So, what, what happened? Did, did, did that, that happen? No. No. <laughs> and especially uh, <coughs> women wise, nothing. It took me two years before I got another television opportunity as an actress, and that was backstairs at the White House. Oh, that's right. Yes, and we did it together. Absolutely. Yes, and that was a, a great, great show. They finally put it out on DVD. It's, it's, yes, it's out there. And it's a, a fabulous series. But it's it, it was like the casting people said, well, okay, we gave him that shot. So now let's go back to... <laughs> yeah. It took a minute. Yeah, it took, it took a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. That beautiful actress, Mad Sinclair. Sinclair. Uh, Mad Sinclair. The story was, you know the story? She goes to the networks and she has this wonderful script and she says, now that the door's open, you know, she said, oh, I'm going to go take it up to him. She took the script up to him and they looked at him and they said, well, no, we've done our quota. Oh. That's the truth. Yeah. We've done our quota. What? Uh, that was Thank a, you. This is now. Yeah. 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 So, this is now. how's it now? Now, uh, we're on the brink of, 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 of blowing it up.
why it's blocked. Uh, we, uh, we haven't had a mandate, and we re-elected Barack Obama. We didn't think that was going to happen. So God is in charge. We can call him Allah, Buddha, whatever it is. But now, it's wide open. It's we got wide. Kerry Washington, too, <laughs> by the way. It's what he is. We got producers. What's the point? 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 What it's, was it's wonderful is that we have, yes, we have re-elected Barack Obama, but once again, I'm reminded of Mad Sinclair, we've done our quota, America, we've done our quota for the African-American race. So what more do you want? You want to become a star, a super, well, superhero? Well, the quota's different now. Yeah, you know, yeah. So uh, once again, I don't blame the consciousness. What I, I look to is the people to rally. This is about the people for the people by the people. So what they want will become the 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 flag point Absolutely. of what we what we will be doing what we, you know we'll say to our young people. So that's so why I say once again I call to the people, please, you know, if you want to see difference, make the difference. We just so the actors up here trying to reflect to you through the art of what our society is about. If you don't like the fact that there are no African Americans, no Asians, no Mexican performers, no whatever enough, then you should say something about it. Don't sit on your dusty rusties. Come out here and say, whoa, whoa, we came to Newcastle. We saw, we saw LeVar Burton, Lou Gossett, and Ben Leslie, and Ben was a great. You got to go home. You got to write whoever you got to write, your congressman, your the channels, and say, we want more storytellings in our homes. We want more no diversity more in our homes. Right, exactly. We are right. tired of it. We are tired of it. Is anybody out there? Yeah. Yes. Are you, are, you are you tired of it? Are you tired of it? Yeah, you can't give me a oh, yeah, Are you really tired? Have you had enough? Yes. Then do something about it. Yeah, man. There you go. <laughs> uh, so I'll tell you what. So, uh, oh, man, I'm never going to take it anymore. Are there some folks out there who would like to ask some questions of our stars? Okay. You had your hand up first, but you're gonna have to shut it. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I just go back to Roots as a as an event. Um, as oh, that's a, right. We're here to talk about Roots. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I as a grade schooler when it came out learned about your Holocaust before I learned about the Holocaust. I mean, they they did not rewrite the books fast enough, so they actually showed the movie in class, mm -hmm. yes. and that was that was our history lesson. Yes. So I learned exactly. about slavery before I learned about the American Revolution. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was mm -hmm. you know in fourth grade or whatever right. yes. it was. Right. You know, so it was huge. Our good friends in Texas, though, who buy most of the school books from the United States of America, Roots was, at one time in the 70s and 80s, it was a very much used tool, uh, educational tool in our nation's classrooms. That has changed. Yes. Yeah. 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 And the focus has, has, has shifted away from, from that. But I, I, I understand. I, I, am I wrong? Didn't they make Roots a part of a, a curriculum to be studied now? It was. It was. It was. It's it was no longer? Part. Yeah. Was no longer. You are kidding. No. No. Sad to say. Okay, who else? Uh, the lady right there in the yellow, the scar. Hi. Thank you so much for coming, first and foremost. I'm from Texas, and I watch you. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> Can you guys hear in the back? Okay, speak up. Yeah. Um, so my question is, uh, I'm here at Sloan School, to be the industry you all are in, and I'm still facing adversity as a black actress. So what advice would you give um, in tackling roles like this that touch on such sensitive matters? Still require performance to progress. <coughs> like, what, what advice should I take you to have? Give up. <laughs> <laughs> you make it or make it yourself. You know, there are young filmmakers out there yes. who are doing incredible work today. <laughs> incredible work. I mean, did you see uh um uh, uh what is it Southern um. Beasts of a Southern Wild. Beasts of a Southern Wild. This wonderful actors and people are doing things. But they have to, but they need support. You know, they're doing all this wonderful work. They need to be like here. You know, these black film uh, 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 makers are making fantastic films, but are getting ex any exposure? That's because you're not watching them. You know, we would rather, we could rather go see. We rather. No, no I, I, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm, I'm not beating up on you. I'm trying to inform you. Understand something. We go. We'll go rather go see The Hobbit. 
<laughs> then go see something like Southern, the uh, um, Beast of the Southern Wild. But there's theater too, darling. It's not just oh theater. yeah, yeah. We're talking about the film. But, 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 but there, the film there are places that she can go, and if she can get in with a company, mm -hmm. that's where you learn. Theater is where yes. you learn yeah. your craft. Yes. yes. And I said give yeah. up because, yes. and, and whenever I'm asked by somebody, what do I do in order to, you know, put myself in a position to where you are? My first inclination. There is really no such thing as impossible. Right. None. Yeah. Yes. There's no such thing. If you want it badly enough, you will find a way to have it. And you yeah. will find it. Don't you ever give up. To make you happy. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It all starts with you. It's inside of you, your determination. We can't give it to you. Your two teachers can't give it to you. And these direct they can't give it to you. It starts within you, your determination, your commitment to your excellence. You've got to go out and claim it. Okay, really? lady up, yes. uh, up there, right there. Um, yes, this is... Oh. You're not lady. lady. <laughs> 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 um, I, I remember um, I was in grade school, too, when Roots came out, and they showed it in school. I went to a predominantly white... I grew up in a predominantly white town, and I was the only raisin in the oatmeal. <laughs> and I got the looks, and, and it was exhilarating and infuriating and... And also, it, it put in a sense of pride because I could understand what the story was because my parents and everybody told us to be proud. But then when you saw and you understood what people had been through, then it instilled some pride. And, and I was, it was a little confusing too because it was a lot to carry as a, you know, young person to try to explain to all your white, you know, college, or your white school friends, you know, why. But at any rate, what I really want to hear from you all is if you could talk a little bit about what the experience was like actually making these scenes, these very dramatic, very touching scenes on set. You know, did they use real whips? Like, does it look really real? Like, and how did the cast react? That whip was real. I did it to Lavar, show you back. <laughs> So Lavar, what was pick one scene? Well, that, that's a good that's a good so, scene. So where's the that's real a good scene. So, so, so talk well, about we talked about bit. it. We talked and about it. Uh, you know, in, 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 in the two, piece, two days or two different times. Two different times on two different occasions, and, and it was interesting for me because you know um, they were they, they were looking for an actor who could express a physicality, and I was really into that. I really enjoyed the physicality of, of the role, the the running, the jumping, the manhood training, all of that. And so, in my mind, I was really looking forward to you know, to the, to the whipping scene because it was another opportunity for me to be physical. What I was not aware of was the <laughs> emotional impact of actually standing there on, on an apple crate with my back to a man who had a whip in his hand and whose job was to control the whip. Well, with the tip of the whip, when, it, when he cracks it, the tip of the whip is moving at 120 miles an hour. His job was to wrap the whip around my body as gently as he could. It was not happening yeah. the first day. I just could not. Be still. And he hadn't even lashed it yet, <laughs> jumping up and down. So they brought him back, and I spent the morning with him, and he did all of his tricks, and I just began to develop a trust with this man and, and recognized that he really was a master at this whip, that he could do what he claimed he could do, was to just lay it in there and have it wrap around me, and then the makeup man would come in with a syringe and, with fake blood and strike it down my back. And then, then the, 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 there was enough blood so that the whip, when it wrapped around, it would like snap and pop and it looked like a fresh wound. I mean, it was really, the editing, the storytelling was impeccable. The stagecraft behind it was impeccable. But we had to find a, we had to find a way to get the actor comfortable enough to let a man stand there and ostensibly, you know, throw a whip at my back. Leslie, so we just saw that scene of you and your and your being taken from your mom and dad. That was. That How did was you prepare for that? Well, it was difficult, and the, the difference is, I wound up with. I was passed out when when, when they cut, and in fact, uh, uh, Marvin Chomsky got so nervous, and the, you know they had the smelling sauce and the stuff because it, it just uh, uh, it, it, it just killed me that a human being could do this to another human being and say, I am separating this family. You know, even now, that's something to me in, in here. And how naive Kizzy was to trust her friend 
why she thought she was a friend when, you know, <laughs> there was no equalness in this relationship. Um, and the fact that uh, she taught her how to read and write, which was wonderful, but at the same time very dangerous. And then uh, when uh, she helps her boyfriend, uh, and she writes the pass, and of course he gets caught and gives up that Kizzy helped him, that she stood in that window and let her be taken.